Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and welcome to this week's early chapter book read along. So I am reading this week Astrid and Apollo and the Starry Campout and this is by VT Bedania. Astrid and Apollo and the Starry Campout. Astrid and Apollo and the Starry Campout by VT Bedania, illustrated by Dara Lashia Lee. Chapter One, Bright Enough. Astrid pushed the clothes to the side. She sat on the floor. Then she took a big breath. Hiding in a dark closet is not fun, she said. Astrid did not like the dark. She didn't like shadows. She felt worried when she couldn't see anything. But she had her special glow-in-the-dark wand with her. The wand made her feel safe. She pressed the power button and the wand turned on. Where are you, Astrid? asked Apollo. Her twin brother stood outside the closet. She heard his voice through the door. Not in here, said Astrid. She watched the lights from the wand glow onto the wall. Everyone's in the car already, Apollo said. Astrid looked up at the door. I said I'm not here. Her family was taking their first camping trip. Apollo had always wanted to go camping. He was so excited. Astrid was not. We're waiting for you, said Apollo. Guess you have to go without me, said Astrid. Hurry up so we can leave, Apollo said. Astrid made a face. I don't want to go camping. Why not, Apollo asked. Is it because of what Lily said? Astrid frowned. Their cousin Lily just got back from camping. She told them she saw a bear playing in the trees near her camp. Lily said it was big and mean. Plus, Lily got 50 mosquito bites. At first, Astrid could not believe it. Then she counted them. It was exactly 50 bites. Lily said the bathrooms were really smelly. The toilets didn't even flush. Every time she went near the bathroom, Lily pinched her nose. Her nose was all pink when she got back. Astrid did not want to run into a big mean bear. She did not want to get 50 mosquito bites. And she for sure did not want to use a toilet that didn't flush. Come out right now, Apollo opened the closet door. Hey, Astrid stood up. She dropped the wand. Apollo laughed. I knew you were in there. Of course, Astrid put her hands on her hips. You heard me talking. Apollo peeked inside the closet. Were you hiding so you didn't have to go camping? Astrid made fists at her sides. I was not hiding, she said, even though she was. Apollo saw the wand on the floor. The light shined up in his face. What are you doing then? He asked. I'm testing my glow-in-the-dark wand, Astrid said. Astrid was not happy about sleeping outside. Sure, she would be in a tent with her family, but they would be in the dark. If the wand was really bright, Astrid would be able to see. Then she wouldn't have to think about shadows. Astrid pointed at the wand. Do you think it will give us enough light? She asked. Apollo crossed his arms over his chest. Enough light for what? Did Lily tell you a scary story about the dark, too? No, but I want to make sure our camp has a lot of light, said Astrid. It will, Apollo said, and if it does get really dark, you won't be alone. We'll all be together. You'll have such a good time, you won't even think about Lily. You can't believe her stories anyway. Astrid knew that was true. Lily usually made things sound scarier than they were. One time, she said the new slide at the water park was 250 feet high. It turned out to be only 25 feet. Another time, Lily said a giant gorilla broke out of his cage at the zoo. It turned out to be a baby chimp. Still, Astrid couldn't help feeling worried. I know you'll like camping, Astrid, said Apollo. Listen, Mamie Mom packed egg rolls. We all love her egg rolls. We can eat them on the way to camp, or we can eat them at the camp. We can sit by a campfire. It will be an adventure. An adventure sounded nice to Astrid. Are you sure, she said. Apollo nodded. Astrid and Apollo, what's taking so long? Mom called from downstairs. Apollo took Astrid's arm. Let's go. Camping is going to be so fun. Chapter 2. Amazing Egg Rolls On the way to the campground, the family stopped for burgers and fries. Dad got the food out of the drive-thru window. Mom passed it to Astrid and Apollo in the back seat. 
Here's your lunch, she said. Thanks, Astrid sighed, looking down at her burger. She had been hoping for egg rolls. Mom, I wish we had egg rolls. I'm sorry, I didn't have time to make them this morning, Mom said. Apollo looked at Astrid. He shrugged. Astrid shrugged back. Your egg rolls are the most amazing egg rolls in the whole world, said Astrid. It's true, Mom. They are really good, said Apollo. Dad nodded. I agree. They're the best. Mom smiled. Thank you. Packing for camping took a long time. I promise to make amazing egg rolls another time. Astrid took a bite of her burger. Her, her baby sister, Eliana, sat in the car seat next to her. Astrid gave one fry to Eliana. Eliana bit into the fry, then took a sip of her milk. Apollo sat on the other side of Eliana. He stuffed a bunch of fries into his mouth. He made funny faces at her. El El <laughs> Eliana laughed so hard she spit up milk. Then she screamed so loud her face turned red. You're hurting my ears, said Astrid. Mom turned around. Where did she learn to do that? She sounds like a wild cat, said Dad. He rubbed the side of his head. Was someone screaming on one of your baby TV shows, Apollo said with his mouth full. Eliana laughed. No more screaming, please, Mom said to her. After that, Eliana was quiet. The campground was three hours away. Astrid said back, sat back and fell asleep. When she woke up, Dad was driving into the state park. He checked them in at the office. Then he bought a pack of wood. For the campfire, he said. They drove on a winding road into the forest. Look at all those trees, said Apollo. Eliana looked out the car window. Trees, she said, but it sounded more like cheese. The trees were tall and pretty. The sun was shining down through the leaves. Astrid watched the forest carefully. She wondered, were bears hiding in there? Big, mean bears with sharp claws and sharp teeth? She hoped not. She tried not to keep thinking about what Apollo said. Camping was fun, fun, fun. After a few minutes, Dad said, there it is. He turned off the road and parked. Everyone got out of the car. The camp area had a picnic table, a fire pit, and a big grassy open space. Dad pointed at the grass. That's where we put the tent. Mom helped Eliana into her stroller. We'll be right back. We're going to look for the water fountain. Suddenly, Eliana let out another scream. Everybody covered their ears. Dad took the tent from the car. He spread it out on the grass. He handed a long bendy pole to Astrid and Apollo. Astrid held one end of the pole. Apollo held the other. Dad showed them loops on the outside of the tent. Now stick the pole into those, these loops, he said to them. Next, Dad shoved metal pegs into the grass. He used a small hammer to pound the pegs into the ground. Astrid and Apollo went to the car and got more tent poles. They put them through the tent loops. Then the twins helped Dad stick the ends of the poles into the pegs. The poles lifted the tent up high. Soon the tent was standing up like a little house. Astrid looked up at the orange and purple sky. The sun was setting. She hurried to the car. She had to get her glow-in-the-dark wand. But when she opened the car door, the wand wasn't there. Chapter 3. Don't Look Down Oh, no, said Astrid. She remembered now. The wand was at home. She had dropped it on the closet floor. She forgot to pick it up. Astrid saw Mom and Eliana coming back to the camp. She bit her lip. Mom pushed Eliana's stroller over. What's wrong? Astrid did not want to tell Mom that she forgot her wand. She did not want to say she was scared of shadows, big mean bears, or the smelly camp bathroom. She was afraid if she talked, she might cry. Finally, she said, I don't want mosquito bites. It was half a lie. Don't worry, Mom said. This park doesn't have mosquitoes. Astrid looked at her in surprise. It doesn't? That's why we came here, said Mom. Aren't mosquitoes everywhere? Apollo asked. A lot of bats live near this park. The bats eat all the mosquitoes, said Dad. No mosquitoes? That would mean no mosquito bites. Astrid was so happy she wanted to shout, yes! Mom put her arm around Astrid. Do you feel better now? Astrid nodded. Can you two help get water, Mom asked. She handed Astrid and Apollo two big water bottles. 
She pointed to a grassy trail. Follow that to the road, then go straight. The water fountain is at the end of the road. It's near the bathroom. Uh-oh, Astrid thought. She was trying to forget about the bathroom. Now she felt like she needed to use it soon. She and Apollo walked on the trail. They came to a dusty road. Some kids rode by on bikes. Their bike wheels made a crunchy sound on the dirt road. They passed other tents. Smoke rose from fire pits. Campers grilled burgers and hot dogs. The campers waved at Astrid and Apollo. They waved back. Astrid saw another Hamong family. Two little boys sat on a bench with their dad. The dad was fixing the line on the fishing pole. The mom was smashing something in a bowl. Astrid smelled shrimp paste. She's making papaya salad, she said to Apollo. I was going to say that, Apollo said. He pretended to smash something in a bowl too. Astrid laughed. A Apollo pointed up ahead. There's the water fountain. Astrid saw it. The fountain was next to a big, was next to a small wooden building with a big door. Apollo grinned. That must be the bathroom. He went first. When he came out, he said, don't look down. Astrid couldn't wait anymore, so she went in. She decided not to hold her nose. She didn't want it to turn pink. Instead, she did something else. She held her breath the whole time, and she didn't look down. She looked up, though. She saw skinny spiders on the wall. They were chasing ants. Flies and moths flew around the light above her. Big beetles harried after small beetles by the window. They looked like they were biting each other. Astrid was too busy holding her breath to be scared of them. She squirted a hand gel in her hands and ran outside. Apollo was waiting by the fountain. Let's fill the water bottles, he said. He held his bottle under the fountain. Astrid turned it on. Water splashed onto Apollo. He jumped back. It's so cold! Apollo looked silly. He was shouting, hopping, and shaking off water. Astrid laughed. When Apollo's bottle was full, Astrid turned off the water. My turn, she said. The twins traded spots. Astrid moved back. She did not want to get splashed. When her bottle was full, the twins walked back toward the camp. Astrid looked up. It was darker now. The sky was gold and red. It looked like Italian ice. Apollo was watching the sky too. We're far from the city. I bet the stars will be brighter here. I forgot about that, Astrid smiled. She liked stars. See, camping isn't bad, right? Said Apollo as they walked along the trail. Not that bad, said Astrid. She tried not to think about shadows coming out. When they got back to the camp, Astrid and Apollo gave mom the water. Dad passed around headlamps. He set one lamp on top of Astrid's head. Then he turned it on. A bright light glowed onto the ground. You're the sun, so you get the brightest lamp, he said. Dad was talking about Astrid's Hmong name, Gal Nu. It means sun. He always told her she was the brightest light in the family. Astrid smiled. She didn't have her glow-in-the-dark wand, but she had this for now. Chapter 4, Shiny Stars Mom put two lanterns on the picnic table. Light shined all around. Astrid was glad it was bright. Dad set some wood in the fire pit. He started a fire. The red flames grew bigger and bigger. That's cool, Dad, said Apollo. Eliana sat in her stroller. She pointed at the fire. Don't touch. Fire is very hot, okay, said Astrid. Eliana pulled her arm back. Let's start making dinner, Mom said. Dad poked the fire with a long stick. Who wants to help with the chicken wings? Me, said Apollo. Can you help with the rice and pepper sauce? Mom asked Astrid. Yes, said Astrid. Soon the fire was ready. Dad and Apollo put the chicken on the grill. Mom gave Astrid packs of purple sticky rice. The rice was still warm because it had been cooked that morning. Astrid opened the rice packs. She put the rice on paper plates. Next, Mom took out the cutting board. Astrid handed her Thai chili peppers. Mom cut the peppers into little pieces. Astrid helped her mix them into a sauce. Eliana reached for the pepper. No, it's spicy, Mom said. She moved it away. Spicy, said Eliana, but it sounded more like spicy. Dad and Apollo carefully turned over the chicken wings. 
I'm getting so hungry, said Apollo. Me too, Astrid rubbed her stomach. Dad stuck a fork in the chicken. It's almost ready. It smells good, said Mom. The chicken reminded Astrid of Mong Village Mall. It smells like the barbecue shop at Mong Village, she said. Going to Mong Village was so fun. The small shopping mall was always filled with people. The busy shops had the best food and drinks. Suddenly, Astrid remembered her favorite drink. She got up and ran to the car. Her small cooler was on the back seat. Astrid carried her small cooler back to the fire. She put it on the bench. Her sweet soybean drink was inside. Astrid took out the drink. She saw Dad by the big cooler. He had a package of Mong sausages. Is that for breakfast tomorrow, she asked. This? Dad handed the package to her. Yes, we'll cook it in the morning. I can't wait. Astrid loved Mong sausages. They were spicy, crispy, and crunchy. They tasted so different from sausages at the regular grocery store. Dinner's ready, Mom said. Astrid quickly placed the sausages in her cooler. She put the cooler under the table. Then she ate dinner under the stars. The stars were so pretty, they shined like tiny lights. The twins dipped the chicken in the sauce. Mom and Dad poured the spicy sauce over their plates. The chicken wings tasted so good. The purple sticky rice was soft. The pepper sauce was spicy, salty, and sour. Mom pressed the rice into little balls. She fed it to Eliana with small bites of chicken. Astrid looked around the campfire. Her parents were talking and smiling. Apollo and Eliana were laughing. Astrid did not want to worry about shadows anymore. She just felt happy to be with her family. After dinner, everyone was full. They sat by the fire. See the stars, said Dad. He was holding Eliana in his lap. Campers were still awake. Families stood by the water fountain. Kids played by the road. Astrid watched everyone around her. Even though it was night, she didn't feel scared. When they were all in their pajamas, Mom said it was time to get into the tent. Eliana was already in her playpen. She was sound asleep. They crawled into their sleeping bags. You can turn off your headlamps, Dad said. Astrid knew it would be dark, but she felt safe in the tent. She turned off her headlamp. Good night, Astrid and Apollo, Mom and Dad said together. Good night, Mom and Dad, they both said. Astrid smiled. She zipped up her sleeping bag. She snuggled into it and closed her eyes. That's when she heard a scratching noise outside. Chapter 5, Coo Coons. Astrid's eyes opened wide. She stayed very still. What's that sound? Mom said in the dark. Is it a bear? Astrid wondered. Astrid wished she had her glow-in-the-dark wand. No, she wished she was home. She wished she was inside her house with the doors locked. The scratching grew louder. Something was moving around. It was right outside the tent. Dad got out of his sleeping bag. I need light, he said. Apollo handed Dad his headlamp. Dad turned it on. It wasn't as bright as Astrid's. Dad moved the dull light across the window. Then he stepped over to the tent entrance and unzipped the flap. He was going outside. Astrid's heart pounded. She could not let a big mean bear with sharp claws and sharp teeth get her dad. Wait, she said. Astrid jumped up from her sleeping bag. She put on her headlamp. Then she hurried after dad. I'm going too, said Apollo. Be careful, Mom whispered. Astrid and Apollo followed Dad outside. The night was so dark, only a soft glow came from Dad's headlamp. A quiet wind blew past the trees. Crickets chirped a loud song. Dad turned to Astrid and Apollo. He pointed to the left. This meant he would go left. Astrid and Apollo nodded. They pointed to the right. All of a sudden, Astrid heard the scratching noise again. It was too dark to see anything. She turned on her headlamp. A white light splashed into the grass. Then she saw it. Two small eyes glowed up at her. Behind those eyes were more eyes. It looked like a field of tiny, shiny Christmas lights. It wasn't a bear. It was a group of raccoons. She knew it by the masks around their eyes and the stripes on their tails. She remembered learning about raccoons at school. They didn't like bright lights or loud noises. Astrid aimed her headlamp straight at the raccoons. 
Right at that moment, Eliana woke up inside the tent and screamed. The raccoons took off. off. Apollo jumped up and down. You saved us, Astrid! Dad ran over. Good job. You used your light to scare them away. It was Eliana's scream, too, Astrid said. Is everything okay? Mom asked through the tent window. Was it a bear? Dad, Apollo, and Astrid laughed. Dad opened the tent flap. They stepped back inside. Raccoons, he said. He zipped the tent closed. Cocoons, said Eliana. They were staring at us with beady little eyes. Then Astrid scared them off with her light, Apollo said. She was very brave. Dad put his hand on Astrid's shoulder. We are lucky we have Astrid to protect us. You should have seen her, Mom, said Apollo. I'm proud of you, Mom said. She patted Astrid's back and kissed her head. Thanks, Astrid said. She smiled. It was dark, but she felt like everything was full of light. Back to bed, everybody, said Mom. It was hard to calm down after that. Astra didn't know how or when, but she finally fell asleep. In the morning, she woke up to birds chirping. The sun was shining in through the top of the tent. The wind blew fresh air into the window. Astra got up and ran outside. She saw little paw prints on her cooler. She opened the lid. The mong sausages were gone. Always remember to lock coolers in the car, said Dad. Sorry, Astrid said. I forgot it was under the table. It's okay. Remember for next time, Dad said. Astrid nodded. I won't forget, she sighed. Now we don't have breakfast. Well, maybe we do, said Mom. She opened the big cooler. She pulled out a large plastic bag. Is that egg roll filling, said Apollo. Mom nodded. Then she took out a flat square package. Egg roll wrappers, Astrid said. Mom smiled. You saved our family from a raccoon attack, so we will cook amazing egg rolls for you. Astrid hugged Mom. Thank you. Eliana watched them. Then she opened her mouth wide to scream. No, said Dad. He quickly covered it with his hand. Then everyone laughed. Astrid looked at Apollo. He gave her a big grin. Astrid smiled back. She thought about everything that had happened at camp. She had run into raccoons, but she did not run into a bear. She saw bugs biting each other, but she did not get mosquito bites. She held her breath in the bathroom, and she did not smell anything stinky. Instead, she ate dinner under shining stars. She was brave. She had protected her family. She was not afraid to be in the dark anymore. Astrid didn't need her glow-in-the-dark wand after all. She had an adventure, just like Apollo said she would. He was right. Camping was fun. And that's the end. And if you check out this book, you can read facts about Hmong and popular Hmong foods. There's also a glossary, some questions to talk about. And in the beginning, you can learn the pronunciation of Hmong words. Gao, Gao Chi, Gao Nu. The end. That was Astrid and Apollo and the Starry Campout by VT Bidania, illustrated by Dara Lashia Lee. I hope you liked this week's edition of Early Chapter Book Read Along. And I hope you'll join me next time. Bye for now.